you come here, you realize that you didn't come here by accident. Here is Eldred, Pennsylvania in McKean County, just south of the New York border, home to the Eldred World War II Museum. If you're thinking this tiny town, population 850, is an unlikely place for a first-class museum, you're not alone. Jay Tennis, the museum's director, admits that it's out of the way, but it's also out of the ordinary. When you come in, you'll notice there is a touch of quality. Our director of displays, Guy Pernetti, has done work for the Smithsonian Institution, also for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Our architect, Pete McDonald, has also given us a great scheme and a unique research library. Something that you usually don't see in a museum, but a, a place where students and visitors can come and research over 8,000 books. There's a, just something for everybody. Opened Memorial Day 1996, the museum is dedicated to preserving the history of World War II. It also commemorates the 1,500 workers who came from Eldred, Olean, and Bradford to work round the clock making munitions at Eldred's World War II defense plant. 95% of the workers were women. The National Munitions Company, which was in existence from 1941 to 1945, produced over 8 million various incendiary devices, also mortar shells, that were used for the British Army and also the American Army. The museum was the brainchild of George Rodebush, who served as general counsel for the munitions company. He wanted to recognize those women for their selfless and dangerous service. Inspired by his father's vision, Tim Rodebush conducted informal surveys to find out just how much the public knew about World War II. And they didn't know, just very basic things. Who were our enemies? Why were we fighting? These are important things to who we are as Americans. Rhoda Bush spearheaded the museum effort and now serves as its chairman. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. The quote by famed poet and philosopher George Santayana serves as the museum's maxim and is prominently displayed above the arches framing the entrance. The generation that lived through these things is passing. And for another generation, we have to be ears. We have to listen. Because if we don't get these stories, we can't pass them on to our children. The museum, which was closed the day of our visit, is open four days a week and by special appointment. It attracts more than 8,000 visitors each year. We have visitors from all over the place. We have them from various countries that hear about us, oftentimes through the website. We have the senior citizen bus tours that come in where everybody has lived through World War II. We see uh, school groups that come in and they're learning things in their classroom and this is supplementing their education. We have college students that are able to do more advanced research. But it's a nice cross-section of people. The internet is an exciting part of what we do here because we get emails every single day that come from all around the globe. And so it's always something new and gives us something to do a little bit of research on and it expands the whole world for us and shrinks it in some ways too, I guess, as, as we find ourselves in dialogue with people literally all around the world. Some soldiers ride the tanks and some walk. Visitors to the museum are treated to a host of spectacular exhibits that include colorful battle maps, dioramas complete with sound effects, and even an authentic World War II submarine periscope. Stand by for depth charges. History comes alive when visitors take command of the radio-controlled tank as it climbs a mountain, or when they step inside a life-sized replica of a European command center. The majority of the things that we have here are things that people have brought in. They were treasured items from their loved ones, maybe a grandfather, home front items from a from somebody that worked in, a, in defense industries. Their contributions are the things that you see here. Colonel Mitchell Page's Medal of Honor and his last dress white uniform are treasured gifts to the museum. Colonel Page, a Pennsylvania native, distinguished himself during the counterattack at Guadalcanal. He was there with 33 men in his machine gun platoon. He was the sergeant that led them and was told to hold a hill. And in short, he held that hill against overwhelming Japanese odds. At the end of the battle, everyone in his platoon was either killed or wounded. And they'd held off 2,500 to 3,000 Japanese. And he was awarded the Medal of Honor for his leadership role. 
About 20% of the museum's collection can be displayed at any one time, so exhibits rotate constantly. As curator, it's Nick Pascuzzi's job to interpret the objects and put them in a setting that tells a story of World War II. On Being this particular day, we hear the story behind a Colt 45 revolver. revolver. It's actually a veteran of two world wars, um, donated to us by uh, Bill Sh Shiderly. He was a Marine Corps captain. Um, his father carried it throughout France during World War I, and his father gave it to him to carry during World War II. And some of the more um, fascinating items, the K rations, the little boxes of food, the crackers, and the things that came in cans that the soldiers actually had to sit down and eat, the personal items, the playing cards, the dice, the little shaving kits and sewing kits, and you know, pictures of loved ones, prayers, and Bibles. Uh, I think the smaller items, that were carried by the soldiers are the most fascinating. Um, we had a kid come in. We have actually have his great-grandfather's uniform on display in the back room, and he said, that's my great-grandfather. And so I was telling him what each medal was. The, his grand, his great-grandfather was a paratrooper, and he was a pathfinder uh, with the 502nd paratroop, uh, Parachute Infantry Regiment. And he was awarded two Purple Hearts, a Bronze Star, a POW medal. And I was telling this kid this, and his whole class was watching. And I said, you, you should be very grateful that your great-grandfather was such a good man, and be proud that his, his uniform's on display in this museum. He started crying, because he, he didn't, I don't think he realized that. But um, it's, it, I get some satisfaction when a, a father brings his kid in here, or a grandfather brings his grandson in here, and they sit and they look at the items together. And they sit and it makes that connection. You look at that, you know, you see the kid learning, and that's what it's all about. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800 770 2111.